mark the 300th birthday of Frederick the Great, the legendary Prussian monarch. But what was this calculating king really like? Frederick the Great was a king worthy of his name. In the mid-18th century, he unified and expanded Prussian territories and made Prussia a European power. As monarch, Frederick brought Prussia through three wars, serving at the front himself. He was a philosopher, author, musician and composer, a true spirit of the Enlightenment. But how much of this image is actually true? And what drove this man's grand ambitions? Today we describe Frederick as a PR specialist. He paid great attention to what he said in public, to whom he said it, and how his words would be received. Jürgen Lu says that from a young age, Frederick, shown here on the left, sought fame and glory. He wanted to be the opposite of his brutal and despotic father, Frederick William I. When he was 18, Crown Prince Frederick tried to flee to England. But he was captured, along with his friend and confidant, Lieutenant Hans Hermann von Katter. As punishment, Frederick's father made him watch as von Katter was decapitated. Was Frederick planning to escape, or was it all a PR stunt? Through this act, he became known throughout Europe. He tried to flee abroad, so his father imprisoned him and accused him of treason. The king threatened Frederick with the death penalty. Then monarchs from across Europe came to his defense. Suddenly everyone knew his name. And Frederick did more to court fame. At age 24, he wrote to one of the most brilliant and accomplished figures of the Enlightenment, Voltaire. Their correspondence turned into a friendship that lasted over 50 years. At least, that's the story. They needed each other, and they both realized that. Voltaire was able to say to Europe, look at me, I'm in touch with the Prussian crown prince, I'm his teacher, I'm educating him, I'm a great man too. And Voltaire taught Frederick how to win glory in the civilian and cultural sphere. Frederick should become conversant with the Enlightenment, with philosophy, art, music, theater and opera. And that's what he did. But when his father died, Frederick turned his attention to serious matters. He was crowned king and immediately waged war on Silesia. Two more wars followed. An admirer of Alexander the Great, Frederick knew that true glory was to be found on the battlefield. Today, when we report on wars, we talk about the numbers killed and who fought against whom. But the war anecdotes about Frederick the Great describe the ingenious things he said to maintain morale among his troops. Frederick carefully crafted his image. Even today, visitors to Potsdam leave potatoes on his gravestone to honor the king for bringing the potato to Prussia. But that too is only a half-truth. Frederick did say that it might be a good idea to eat potatoes, but as was often the case, he did nothing to bring this about. Frederick did many things, but he didn't plant potatoes. But on the battlefield, Frederick was tenacious. After winning the Seven Years' War, Prussia was a power to be reckoned with. But Frederick's letters tell how the long war aged him. This is when Frederick the Great became known as Old Fritz. By coincidence, he was paying a visit to his sister, and Zizanus, the court painter in Brunswick, took advantage of the opportunity. It's likely that Charlotte, Frederick's sister, convinced him to sit for his portrait. But the only portrait that Frederick sat for himself in his latter years was painted right after the end of the war. Frederick was 51 years old. Though he'd now been dubbed Old Fritz, the portrait reveals this as a misnomer. Here you can see that no matter what he said, he wasn't old, bald, toothless, wrinkled. You see that this modesty was feigned. That modest air was intended to enhance his greatness. And for a long time, it worked. This portrait served as the model for countless others. These pictures finally did depict him as old Fritz, an aging monarch dressed in a simple uniform. Frederick cultivated his public image, even in portraits created in his absence. Daniel Hodowiecki's picture of Frederick on horseback was said to have been his favorite and became the iconic image of the Prussian king. 
Another famous painting of Frederick is Adolf Menzel's The Flute Concert, but it too is an illusion. It didn't happen the way Menzel had painted it. Frederick often played the flute on his own, or for a very small, intimate circle. But this painting depicts him as he was imagined later, in the 19th century. The furnishings here date from the 19th century, not the 18th. Menzel painted his ideal king. In a similar way, our image of Frederick is constantly being re-evaluated and reinterpreted. Two exhibitions now on display in Berlin at the Old National Gallery and the German Historical Museum document this evolution. Frederick wanted to be remembered one, two, three centuries into the future, and even longer than that. He'd be pleased if he knew how much effort was going into the celebrations honoring the 300th anniversary of his birth.